Growing mushrooms can be intimidating when you're just starting out. Not only are there many different kinds of mushrooms you can grow, but there are many different ways. We're glad you landed here, because growing mushrooms on natural logs happens to be our specialty here at Field and Forest. Today, we will be focusing on inoculating with plug spawn. Plug spawn is great for beginners and smaller projects. For more information on other inoculation methods, different spawn types, and information on log health, visit our website and YouTube channel. The first step for any inoculation on logs is to, well, get some logs. Logs need to be cut from living trees while the trees are dormant. You can check out our video, What is Dormancy?, to find out why this is important. Logs should generally be four to six inches in diameter and 40 inches long. This allows for a reasonable spawn run time as well as an ease and handleability, which is a word I'm pretty sure we invented, of the logs. Aim to get the logs as straight as possible so they don't roll while inoculating them. Once you have your logs, you will need a few more things, including an eight and a half millimeter or five sixteenths inch drill bit and stop collar, a drill, your spawn, and wax. These items all conveniently come in a shiitake log starter kit. Wink, wink. Before you begin drilling your log, you'll want to assemble your drill bit and stop collar. Your kit comes with a drill bit, stop collar, and hex key. Take your stop collar and slide it into the bit down one inch, which is the size of a plug. Use the included hex key to tighten the collar. You'll want to drill in a diamond pattern or a four to six inch by one to two inch drill pattern. Start two inches in from the log end and place holes about four inches apart down the length of the log. This is about six to seven holes per row. Rotate the log and begin the second row about two inches below the first row. Stagger the holes so they are halfway between the holes that were drilled in the row before. Do this around the entire log. If you were to connect the dots between the holes, it would create a diamond pattern. Once you've drilled the log, you can get to plugging. Inoculating with plug spawn is a popular choice among beginners and those inoculating less than 100 logs as it does not require any extra upfront costs of an inoculation tool. The process is straightforward. Just take the plug and tap it into the hole with a hammer until flush with the bark. The final step of the process requires that you wax over the inoculation points. You can either melt wax and cover the points, but oftentimes while using plug spawn, it's easiest to use plug wax. Plug wax is a pliable wax that the warmth of your fingers will warm up enough to allow you to smear over the plug and lock in the moisture. You can then proceed to label your logs if you choose. Keeping a record of your strain and inoculation date can prove helpful in following years. Following inoculation, you will want to stack your logs in a low stack to incubate for the next nine to 18 months. This timing is based on diameter of the log as well as strain. You can see a variety of stacking methods in our video, stacking logs for winter storage. Keeping your logs in an area protected from the wind and sun will allow the mycelium to start to work its way through the log, turning the wood to valuable nutrition. Speed of colonization depends on several things, including strain, inoculation rate, log size, and incubation temperature. Logs can also be inoculated and stored in a moderately cool spot indoors to get a jump start during the winter months. This is a nice option if you want to get your logs done before the busy gardening season starts. For indoor incubation, you will need a large plastic bag. Cut small X's through the bag in the two upper quadrants to allow the log to breathe. Place the log in the plastic bag and place it in an area of your house, usually a basement, where the temperatures are between 55 and 60 degrees. Watch for condensation on the bag interior. Condensation is good. It means the mycelium is working. Once you notice a lack of condensation and the log feels dry to the touch, open the bag and lightly spritz the log with water. Fold the bag back up and watch for condensation. As time goes on, you'll start to notice white growth on the ends of the log and occasionally at the inoculation points. The white growth is the mycelium making its way to the log ends and signals a healthy log. You'll want to repeat the spritzing and drying process until the outdoor temperatures are consistently above 50 degrees. And you can take the log out of the bag and move it outside to a shaded, protected spot. Usually spring weather will provide all the moisture the log needs for continued growth. Logs will fruit naturally later in the season, about nine months after the initial planting. Good luck!